Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Thank you everyone. I'm happy everyone is here. Uh, Dolly, uh, Kak Zana, Stanley, Kak Faiz, Prof Spencer and I have new newcomer Nor Ain also ada. Mungkin Zamri pun kena ada. Thank you very much. Uh, can we start now? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. okay. All right. Okay. The uh, Alhamdulillah before we start, uh, I have some uh, rules here. Uh, biasanya untuk kelas kita ni eh, untuk untuk uh, online training macam ni pencaramah yang cakap so I will do the talking and I hope everyone can unmute your speaker uh, your microphone uh, then when I I share my slides after after sharing my slides nanti we will have a Q&A sessions I will also demonstrate uh, how to record our PowerPoint okay right let's begin uh, right now, I'm sure everyone is a bit, uh, I mean, maybe not, not all but me, I'm overwhelmed about uh, this all ERT thing, yeah? emergency remote teaching. Uh, I'm, I'm a face-to-face -face type of person. I like to, 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 to do it face-to-face, -face, but we have no choice now. We have to do it online and somehow we have to learn new things, especially me, I have to learn new things. So this session is actually... Uh, it's a sharing session. I'm here doesn't mean I'm here doesn't mean that I'm better than you. I know everyone is uh, better than me, but I'm here just to share and just to motivate myself actually uh, to to grasp this this all ERT thing. Uh, being in the group with the uh, uh, other penyelaras, yeah, other uh, coordinators from other faculties, they are really really into this. And I got a bit uh, uh, anxious about the whole thing. So I want to motivate myself. That's why I'm here. So we want to share uh, what we have. And I hope everyone here can also share what you, you have experienced or your, com, com, uh, your your suggestions, right? So to begin with, I will I would like to start with my, my slides. Today, I, I, I choose the topic optimizing ELIP for ERT. Right? Why? Uh, e, uh, why ELIP? Because I think when I talked to Terry, the head of uh, e-learning, and I said to him, I was a bit overwhelmed with the whole thing. And then he said, Why don't you use ELIP? We have ELIP, so we can utilize the ELIP. So I think, why not I share with everyone how we went, how we can optimize our ELIP? That we, I mean, I, I'm sure everyone has the account. So we, we. We optimize the ELIP for this ERT, yeah, uh, emergency remote teaching. Uh, the outline of my the outline of my sharing today is to set up an ELIP course page, uh, to co to comprehend ELIP tools and external tools, and to design the online teaching. Right. Uh, what we're gonna do is we want to set up ELIP course page. We look at the tools that we can use and how do we want how do we want to design the online teaching this is the basic how we want to design our online teaching right if we talk last time we were used with uh, blended learning uh, blended learning that's why they count as 80 percent without 80 percent we don't count uh, uh, as blended right but today we are using blended learning substitution or they call it ptg pembelajaran teradun uh, gantian. So we have uh, we have to teach our class through online. So the delivery is 30 to 80 percent of student learning time. Right. And uh, with that, we have to align our online teaching plan with related course learning outcomes, uh, outcomes and learning units. I'm sure everyone, uh, we were asked to do the, the planning, right? The changes in our planning, how we use the, our student learning time, how, what are the percentage, percentages and so on. And that's, that's, that is what PTG is all about. And then when we talk about uh, online learning, uh, of course, it's not, uh, I mean, our students, we see our students virtually, but somehow it's a formal class. So we have to record our students online attendance. And when we talk about uh, when we talk about blended learning substitution, three main components, three main uh, online components that we have to prepare, which are the learning resources, learning activities 
and learning assessments. We cannot get away from this. And this is all, I mean, I'm, I'm sure we are used to this. You know, uh, all the bintang-bintang thing, the star that we're looking for when we do our blended learning. So we now we have to do it. Yeah, the learning resources, learning activities and learning assessment. Right. When we want to manage, looking at setting up an ELIP course page, when we want to manage our page, we have to consider our learning resources. We have to consider learning activities, learning assessment, and our learners. And learning resources, uh, Unimas has provided uh, through Ellipse, we have uh, several resources. The same goes with activities and also learning assessment. Although they are simple, I mean, kind of simple, but those are uh, those are tools that uh, Ellipse provides us. And of course, we have to consider our learners. Uh, just before we started this 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 uh, sharing, I talked to Stanley, Dolly, and Dolly, and they said some challenges when they they tried with their students. I'm sure everyone also experiences the same thing. You know, our learners we are so into this online learning, and yet there are some students who cannot get access to to the classes and so on. Anyway, we have to think about that. So, uh, apart from uh, apart from the tools that are provided by Ellipse, you can also incorporate links to external tools into your Ellipse page. For instance, you can use Padlet, you can use Mentimeter, and some other resources. Yeah, that maybe uh, you have to pay for it, or maybe it's free. You know, but uh, to me, I'm sharing. Uh, how we optimize our ELIP. Uh, I'm sharing uh, what we can do with all the resources or activities or assessments provided by ELIPS, by Unimas. Right, let's move on to the next page. Yeah, how to comprehend ELIP tools. First is the learning resources or learning information. Uh, Unimas provides us with uh, several ELIP tools for learning resources, which includes book, file, folder, label, and URL. I'm sure uh, we are familiar with this, but when we talk about uh, learning resources, now we have to consider not only uh, 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 synchronized mode, but also asynchronous mode. Yeah, I mean, you, we are used with asynchronous, but now we are talking about synchronized as well. So uh, after this session, I will share how we want to share our, our, how we want to record our PowerPoint. Because before this, we just uh, upload our, our file, our PowerPoint, but now we can upgrade it into a recording PowerPoint with our students. And that can be considered as uh, one of the learning resources sharing with the students. Uh, it's an it's a synchronous mode of teaching. Right, uh, this is learning resources. I'm sure some of you have uh, uploaded uh, folders or labels or even URLs for the students. So point is we share whatever that we deem uh, or we think important to our students to get uh, information about our notes or our uh, learning units, right? Okay. Uh, when we talk about uh, sharing uh, learning resources, like I said before, this is the uh, we, we talk about synchronous online learning, which is the real time. It's like we do it face to face with our students. Uh, for instance, like we're doing now, it's real time, it's live. So it's between you and our and your students, uh, both of you present virtually at the same time at different locations. Uh, it's only feasible when all students have strong internet connections. These are some of the problems that uh, instructors uh, have to 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 think of when we when they do the synchronized online learning. Uh, of course, sometimes we don't have the problem, but the students uh, face some problems because they don't have uh, a strong internet connection. So for for further uh, information regarding synchronous tips, maybe you can you can visit this uh, site. Yeah, you, please visit this site. Right, that is synchronous. Asynchronous is 
that does not occur in real time. That I mean, it's like what we have done before. You know, we just upload our notes, labels, or books, or any URL. If so, students can access the information uh, on their own time and, and at, at their own pace. So this is recommended when not all students have strong internet connection. But uh, I mean, I have some students that said to me that they don't even have internet connection. They even ELIP also they cannot access, but only one student. So to me, that is very uh, a small problem. I, I mean, a small number of students lah. All right, so for further asynchronous learning, online learning, maybe you want to visit this, this site. Right, uh, we move on to learning activities. Before we look at the learning resources, now learning activities. Uh, I'm sure some of us who are blended, uh, who got the, the blended learning status, blended status, they are very familiar with these uh, activities, some of the activities, you know, uh, some of the tools, uh, ELIP tools that are provided by by Unimas can be chat, choice. I've never used chat. I I, I, I usually, I, I mean, I've used choice, uh, chat, no, but choice, yes. Database, I've never done it, but it's there. I mean, I'm sure some of you can, uh, I mean, have used it. Even feedback, we always use forum so that we can uh, we can have a discussion with our students. I've never used glossary. I've never used group self reflection, H5, uh, H5P journal questionnaire and wiki. But don't despair because uh, ELIP uh, CAM has provided some guidelines of how to use this. Uh, it doesn't mean that the tools are there. We have to use every tool. Uh, maybe you can choose two or three. Uh, maybe even one, but at least two so that you can use that tools that will connect you with the students that you can do some activities with the students. Maybe uh, a forum, one of the one of the tools that best uh, uh, suit your 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 course. OK, OK. Uh, for this learning activities, uh, ELIP tools tomorrow, Dr. Faiza. Dr. Adiba and, and Puan Nur Ain will share some of the tools uh, that we can use in our online teaching. Uh, and last but not least is about learning assessment. Eh? Uh, learning assessment, ELIP tools. Uh, CAM has provided assignment, quiz, workshop, turn it in assignment. Uh, uh, I'm sure we are familiar with uh, using assignment, the ellipsis we use assignment, and maybe some of you have have used quiz. I know Dr. Linda has used turn it in assignment. Maybe later on she can explain how she she does that. I'm not familiar with workshop. Maybe who ha who is familiar or who who has used this can share here with all of us here. But uh, for learning assessment using the ELIP tools, uh, inshallah on Wednesday, I will share with you how to use quiz. Uh, and Dr. Farah will share how to use external tool which is quizzes, inshallah. All right. So now we have uh, we have we have the idea of of all the learning resources, learning activities, learning uh, assessment. Let's plan. How do we plan to use? How do we plan our learning? Uh, our learning teaching? All right. To me, it will be very helpful if we start to plan what we want to do for each of our course learning unit. When we want to plan, we look at the learning unit. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we have gone through half of the semester, so we have another half of the semester. We have another seven weeks, so we can plan for set for what we want to do for that seven weeks, right? So uh, uh, it might take some time for us to be used to it for the first time, but once we do it ourselves, it will be very easy for us to use later. Uh, maybe for this semester, it's a bit chaotic. Everyone is learning new things, but I'm sure for next time, inshallah, will be will be a, a better, you know, planning this and doing it with our students. And at the end of the day, 
uh, I think, yeah, although I'm saying on behalf of myself that I'm overwhelmed with this, with this whole thing, this all ERT, yeah, emergency remote teaching, but at the end of the day, uh, when we do it, I think we will enjoy it because at the end of the day, we want to connect with our students. I'm sure everyone misses his or her students because I, I do miss my students. Although sometimes I marah marah my students, but I, I miss them. I miss to be in the classes with them. All right. Uh, I think we, I hope we will enjoy doing it. Yeah, we will enjoy doing it later on. Right. Point is, let's just try it. Okay. Right. This is how it looks like. Uh, this is uh, how it looks like. If you want to, to plan, uh, we have the three main components. We have uh, the three main components, which is the online resources, online activities, and online assessment. So this is the le learning unit eight. I, I start with learning unit eight and learning unit nine. Yeah, maybe so and then it goes on with learning unit 10, learning unit 11, and so on. Right. So uh, for online resources, maybe we want to choose uh, either asynchronous mode or synchronous mode. Maybe we maybe we just want to upload our PowerPoint notes. But at the same time, if you want to upgrade yourself, that's what I'm planning to do. We want to we have our PowerPoint recording uploaded. So today I'm going to talk about how we want to record our PowerPoint. Because we have our PowerPoint notes, now how we want to record it so that we can uh, upload to the students. Not only they can read, but also they can listen to our voice and maybe they can lucky enough to get to see our face as well. You know, and then that is asynchronous and maybe you want to use playbacks. It depends on how many students you have. If you think you want to split your class into small groups, maybe you have several series of uh, uh, of meeting with your students of the same learning unit, it's up to you. But you can choose to you can choose uh, for asynchronous or synchronous mode. That is for online resources. Goes back. You think back of what you have planned before. Remember when we do the changes? Yeah, we have the online resources, online activities, online assessment. Think back of what we put last time. So how many learning hours that we want to talk? with our I mean we want to spend with our students then that's that's about it all right so the same goes with online activities you can choose either to utilize uh, elite tools or maybe you want to use ex external tools maybe the combination it's up to you but again we have to 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 to, to consider our students whether they can have uh, easy access or not right so activities can be choice yeah, or it can be forum for external tools, maybe Mentimeter or Padlet. It's up, it's up to you. Maybe learning unit eight, you choose choice and then that's it. Once is enough, you know, one is enough. And online assessment, maybe not everyone you do assessment, but once you want to choose, you can choose using the ELIP tool or you can use the external tools. Right, so that is for learning unit eight and learning unit nine. The same thing, uh, like I said, we have several options of tools, but doesn't mean that we have to to use every every tool there. You know, every tool uh, provided. You can choose is the one or two. At least you use it, and at least you utilize it, and it becomes an effective the teaching and learning experience for you and your students. Uh, I'm I'm just putting here some of different. Uh, options that we have uh, maybe you are not maybe choice is too too simple maybe you can use feedback yeah the elip tool or external tools maybe not only mentimeter maybe you want to use padlet or flipgrid yeah uh, because these uh, tools are available and all the same goes with the online assessment uh, you can use assignment uh, this is the i think this is the the easiest or, or, or the simplest thing that we can do when we want to give assessment to our students and also external tools with this. But uh, uh, during the PTG, uh, not only we consider about online assessment for quizzes and so on, but we have also to consider our final exams. How do we want to 
how to do we want to conduct our final exams? Uh, I'm sure uh, some of you or maybe all of you have heard to many webinars talking about online assessment, alternative assessment. Maybe that will help you how to to plan with your your class later on. Yeah, how do you want to the to 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 fit with uh, with all the online resources, online activities, online assessment, and how they align with your uh, CLO, yeah, or, uh, your, with your CLO. So to me, yeah, personally, I think this every accomplishment starts with the decision to try. Uh, I'm sharing this because I want to motivate myself because I want to try something new. To me, this is new. Uh, maybe to others it's not that new but to me this is new and this is something that i want to try and i have to try it okay i'm sure everyone is so used with using the powerpoint but maybe not many has tried how to record even my me myself i haven't tried it yet but when i look at how people use it i think it's useful not only for the for us but also for the students they can hear our voice they can see our our picture so maybe they think they feel that they are talking to us you know they're having a real lecture with us but this is uh, using the recording uh, recorded powerpoint is a asynchronous mode of teaching actually okay let's move on looking at um, looking at powerpoint recording 10 easy steps how to 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 record our powerpoint okay the first one uh, because why we use uh, why we use uh, powerpoint because i'm sure everyone is uh, familiar with using Microsoft PowerPoint software. And this is the easiest tool since most of us are familiar with uh, PowerPoint for our slides and our presentation. Uh, with this, we can able to, to, to voice and video record yeah, our um, using our PowerPoint. Right, step one. First, you prepare your lecture materials. I'm sure, I'm sure everyone has yeah, his or her own PowerPoint. Step two, when you go to your PowerPoint, uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, you can see slideshow. Yeah, when you open your, 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 your file, you can see slideshow. You click, eh, why is it? That's step four, because step four, step three. Okay, you go to, you go to slideshow, uh, slideshow, record slideshow, record from beginning, right? When you record from beginning, you go to step four, which is you, you see this page. You can see this page, all right? Uh, you see this page, uh, it has, uh, it has a uh, record button, stop and replay. This is, uh, you have the uh, previous and the next page, you have, uh, recording time, eraser, your pen, marker with different colors if you want to scribble, and you have the uh, microphone, camera, and uh, review. Okay, so step five is the, if you if you have the PowerPoint, you want to uh, you want to record previous slide or you want to record next slide. Mm. Step six, you can also see video, you can see video recording of yourself on the screen. This is what I tried before. When you start the record, not only you record, later on you record the whole thing, but you can see your face. And so will your students. When you start the recording, you can record your, your yourself on the screen, right? Step seven, like I said before, this is the, the, the uh, tools here that we can use. Timing, eraser, if you want to scribble, choices of colors you want to, to, to point out, microphone, camera on off, and camera preview point, uh, on off. You see these features, then you can use those features. If you want your voice only, so you off your camera. Yeah, but you can, if you want, it's better if you put both uh, camera on and also the uh, microphone on. Right, step eight, once, you, once you're done recording, you click the, the X button on the top, yeah, on the right hand side, you click or the escape button, so that will stop recording. Then you can see the effects of the recording on your slides panel. Uh, I didn't show it here, but you have it when you you done the recording. Step nine, step ten is 
if you're satisfied, you can save your 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 video your your recording. Uh, save into uh, my pack video MP4. Save into MP4 and you name your file so that you can upload that in Elite later on. That's the ten easy steps of uh, recording. Yeah. So again, like I said, stepping out of your comfort zone and trying new things is the best way to grow. It's for me. This is for me. Uh, I have to grasp with this ERT thing. So growing, learning new things is the new. It's something new for me. All right. So this is how I experience until today. In the beginning, I don't want to do it. I said I cannot do it, but later on, I changed my mind. I do it, but when I want to do it, I don't know how to do it. But I said I will try it and I can do it and I motivate myself. I will do it. And today I did it in the sense that I do this video, this sharing with you. Uh, although there are some, uh, although there are some, some, uh, what do you call that? Some technical problems, but at least I did it. And I'm sorry if uh, my presentation uh, is not as expected. And I'm sorry if my presentation uh, or my sharing is not that helpful. But at least uh, I've done it, and I'm I'm very thankful to everyone for supporting me. Thank you so much. Any questions? Uh, Yes, saya, Dr. Nelson. Uh, boleh ulang balik in a few seconds, the 10 steps. The 10 steps? Ulang balik the slides? Or I'll show you the yeah, demo? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, I'll show you the slides again. All right, thank you. Okay, I'll show you the slides, all right. Right. Step one, prepare our PowerPoint. We have our PowerPoint, right? Step two. When you open your PowerPoint, you will see, yeah, you will see on the panel, slideshow. Yeah, here, slideshow. So, you go to the slideshow, you click that slideshow, then, eh, wait. Okay, you go to slideshow, when you go to the slideshow, you can see this. Then we go to, the, on the panel, record slideshow, record from current slide or record from beginning. Click the record from beginning. Yeah, re click the record from beginning. When you click that record from beginning, you will have this page. You will have this page, which is the record button to start on the top. Uh, you have some other panels. Okay, when you start clicking the record button, you get this. And you will get this. Okay, you can see the previous slide, the next slide. When you start doing it, uh, when you start recording, you can see if, if the camera is on, you can see yourself there being recorded as well while you're talking yeah, about the, your slides. Okay. So these are some features maybe you can use while you, you talk with your students. Although you're talking to your, I mean, alone, but actually you're talking to your students. You can scribble, you can use the pen or the marker. This is the eraser, the different colors that you can use. Uh, these are some options, whether you want your microphone on or off. These are the timing for each slides and also the duration of the, part, the, the whole uh, slides. Step eight, once, once you're done, you click the exit button on the top. Yeah, you click the exit button, then it stops recording. Okay, once you once you're done, you can see on your slide pen, pane, you can see uh, the effects of the recording. So you know that it's being recorded. So once you're happy with that, maybe you want to to save it. Yeah, you click save as, and then in your where you want to save it, uh, and then you uh, click you save it into uh, my pack for video or MP4. So once it's recorded, uh, once it's saved, then you can use that to be uploaded in your in your PowerPoint in your Elite. Puan Siti. Yes, I am. Yeah, I yes. Believe, you be, I believe you have a demonstration for us, can because some uh, some participant actually requested that you enlarge your PowerPoint tadi because it's too small. But I think uh, if you use a live demo, that would be easier for us. Right. Okay. Uh, 
I will uh, we will share how I will demo. Yeah, uh, although I have never used this, but I think we can use it. OK, OK, let's look. Let's let me check on my slides. OK, all right. OK, this is my. Can you see it? Yeah, boleh ya semua ya? Boleh, this, boleh. Okay, 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 this is like. my slide, my PowerPoint, my PowerPoint slide. I will go to slideshow, right? When I go to slideshow, I go to record slideshow. Okay, I click here, record from beginning. Okay, record from beginning, I click this. Once I click this, you see? You have the record button, the stop replay, uh, the previous uh, slide, the next slide, uh, the X button the, to the exit. This is the, the timing, uh, the eraser, pen, colors and whatnot. Uh, microphone, look at my camera is off. Let me turn it on. Uh, uh, something is wrong with my, something is wrong with my, uh, my, my, apalah. My, my, I think my PowerPoint is something is wrong. But then if you turn it on, then when you start recording, you can see your face. Okay, I will start record now. Okay. Three, two, one. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum. Today we we'll see again. My topic today is foundation of interpersonal communication. Let's move on to my first slide. My first, uh, uh, when we talk about interpersonal communication, there are some advantages and disadvantages. The five for advantages of interpersonal relationships, I we have five here. Say five advantages of interpersonal relationship, and also we have another five disadvantages of interpersonal relationship. Now I stop. Okay, I stop recording. Can you see? Can you see the 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 uh, the sign here showing that it's recorded? I can yes. uh, can replay it, you know. Okay, once I replay it, I think I'm. Let's say if I'm happy with it. Okay. Okay. Right. We need. Okay. I'm happy with the recording, although it's too fast, you know. But this is for the sake of demonstration. So I'm happy with my video. Now I go to save as. I want to save my video. So. Uh, I just want to save it on my PC. Uh, I will choose MPEG4, uh, MP4, sorry, MP4. I choose it, I name it, uh, sample video, and save it. So it's on my PC already, then I can upload it into my, I can upload it into my, my, my ELIP. Okay? Am I too fast? How, uh, how do you upload it into Elip and it synchronize with your slide? I'm sorry. What does uh, I mean? What do you mean? When you upload into Elip, mm -hmm. it, it goes it, together it, with the slide, or it's a separate. Those are separate file. Uh, it's a separate file because you have saved it, right? It's like yeah. you're uploading your PowerPoint. Okay. It's like uh, you're uploading Lin. your PowerPoint. Lin, Lin. Yeah, Lin. yeah, Bang. Um, I think masa you buat recording tu, yes. dia akan filenya dalam bentuk video atau it's no longer PowerPoint lah, Ain. So when you upload, dia akan upload dalam bentuk video. That's in the video of your lecture. So the the PowerPoint is already a separate thing. Okay. But then the video will show your the PowerPoint, right? Correct, correct. Correct. Yes. Uh. I'm sorry, I have never done it, but I think we can use it. You know, it, it looks easy to do it, but I've never tried with my students. No. But I can. know once you file it, because it's in, in MP4, right? It will be uh, the, in the video form, but the student will access, it can see your PowerPoint as well. Yes. Uh, the easiest format that the student can normally access is MP4. Right. Okay. So itu sebab itu yang paling senang student dah dapat tengok. Any any comments or any suggestions or anything? Yang boleh kita share dekat sini because this is a sharing session. I'm here just to 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 initiate and then we share. We learn from each other, I'm sure. Lin, saya nak tanya. 
Okey saya Kak Zana. Kalau um, lecture kita buat sampai setengah jam kan. Uh -huh. Jadi kalau recording ni sampai setengah jam boleh ke? Macam mana kita ataupun kita chunk it into uh, shorter version ke? What is your, what do you think about it? Uh, I, I think because usually I have more than uh, let's say sometimes kita sampai 20, 20 slides right? Maybe let's yeah, say it's one slide is one minute. So we have 20 minutes of the 20 minutes of lecture with our students. It can be more. I, I think it can be more. But then, uh, kalau banyak sangat, maybe kita cangkan dia untuk kecil lah kot. Sebab like I said, saya tak pernah cuba sebenarnya. Saya tak pernah cuba benda ni. Tapi saya akan cuba sebab kelas saya ramai. So, bentuk kelas ramai tu saya rasa ini yang paling paling tu. Tapi tak semestinya saya rasa kalau saya nak buat tak semestinya saya setiap slide tu saya akan cakap. Saya akan explain benda yang nampak agak complicated. Pada saya lah. Maybe yang lain tidak kot. Uh, in, in my opinion, it will be slightly shorter time taken because it's only one way. Kadang-kadang bila kita handle the same material in class and then banyak gangguan, banyak interaction and things like that, banyak issue. So that's why we thought that it's slower. Tapi bila you buat recording, I think it should be faster than the actual delivery in classroom. Yes, I agree. Yeah, one city. So. Yes, Wan Siti ada ada request daripada Dr. Farah dalam chat punya section ni. Okay. Uh, dia minta dia minta that you play the recorded video dalam bentuk MP4 format yang dah save tadi tu. Saya dah save eh. Tunggu sekejap. Dia dalam PC saya kan? Yes, yang tadi uh, you save uh, demonstration tu. Ini Lip, nampak tak? icon, nampak icon je tapi you tak playkan video tu. Ni ke dia? Tak nampak tak ni? Nampak tapi there's no sound. Okay, cuba. Slide saja yang ada. Saya dengar suara saya. Oh, Lin boleh dengar tapi kita orang tak boleh dengar. Ya, betul. Pada saya pun saya... Pada saya, saya, saya dengar saya punya recording. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> I hope, I hope I hope adalah sedikit yang boleh digunakan sebab lepas ni kita akan belajar lebih lagi tentang Webex dengan Dr. Diba. She will talk about Webex and I'm sure uh, we are also uh, tak boleh kita tak boleh generalize orang lah sebenarnya saya lah sebenarnya memang tak tahu pun Webex tu macam mana nak pakai. So kita belajar daripada Dr. Diba. Any questions nanti uh, uh, ada chat ada soalan ke? Boleh share. Okey, nanti saya cuba share dalam chat dan semoga ada macam mana ke. Uh, kalau tidak nanti uh, 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 boleh tanya daripada orang yang lebih 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 lebih, lebih baik pada saya lah. Okey, saya minta maaf dengan semua. Sekian terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. I pass the floor to uh, Dr. Adibah. Terima kasih. Thank you, Lin. Thank you, Lin. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you, Lin. Lin. Thank you. Thank you for the support. I love you all. Bye. <laughs> okay, Adiba, please. Thank you, Kak Lin. Alhamdulillah, you're welcome. Okay, clear tak? So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Thank you to Madam Hajah Siti Haslina. Assalamualaikum everyone. Today I want to sharing about Webex where I think everyone has received an email that uh, Unimas has give us Webex education license for every Unimas academic to be used to support online uh, teaching and learning. So the communication unit of CITDA <laughs> already assigned us account to every academic. I think all of us already received an email from uh, Webex and if I'm not mistaken, it already started uh, since May 12 and after receiving uh, your email, I hope everyone already activate your personal Webex account with uh, your personalized organization ID. Once activate your uh, account with your organization ID, 
you will be able to access your Webex account. So today I want to show you about uh, four steps, how you want to set up your Webex process. And the second, I want how you schedule your meeting or how you want to schedule your class. Number three, how to invite your students or how you invite others to join your meeting or to join your class and uh, number four how to conduct your uh, meeting or your class okay uh, so we go to the part number one set up process for those who have activated their account I think uh, set up process is not a big issue for you but for those who have not yet activated your Webex account, please go to your email address like this. OK, you just go to your email address. You search Webex. And then please click activate. The blue button as I show you here. Then you will be taken to this page. This is the Webex pages. And again, you have to activate, click to activate your, uh, your, your Webex account. You have to set your password over here that you want to be used for your Webex account. Make sure you remember your password and your password contain at least eight characters and at least one lower cases, one uh, upper case, and at least one number, and at least one special character. And once you confirm your password, you have to type again your new password, and then you confirm over here. Once you confirm your password, you have to double click, save, and sign in. At the blue button. OK, so your password is already set. And then. After you click. You will be. To this page and you have to sign in again. And it will be taken you to the Webex account. This is my Webex account, so. At this section, you will see many menus on the left of your Webex account. So please uh, go to the preferences sections and you have to click the preferences. In the preferences sections, you need to set the time zone. Here, you how you set your time zone, okay? You have to set your time zone according to Kuala Lumpur slash Singapore. Okay. Once you setting the time zone, please connect to link your Webex to Microsoft 365 account. As I show you this. Okay, like click to link your Webex to your Microsoft 365 account. So, if you're done with this, you will take on to this page and please sign in again using uh, your. Diba, yep. Dr. Duba, yang bahagian, yang bahagian uh, time to region to. Kenapa I tak nampak region yang ada Asia? Region yang ada Asia, you have to click international deadline ways dulu ada tak? Ada jumpa tak? I... Lepas tu baru klik Singapore, uh, baru, baru jumpa Kuala Lumpur, Singapore ada tak? I waiting. Tak jumpa lah. I only saw Bangkok. <laughs> you, you duduk Bangkok ke? 
<laughs> yes, I only saw Beko. I went, uh, I scroll up and down twice. I couldn't find Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. Yang lain ada tak yang try? So far tak ada pula saya ada isu regarding this one. Time zone. Even even when I go to region pun tak ada. There's no sign of Asia or anything. Okay. It's okay. Uh, nanti kita tengok kemudian. We just, we just cross it. Okay. Okay, just cross it. All right. Anyone got the, the same problem? Tak ada kah? I'm not even trying, so I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we proceed. So after you set your time zone, you have to connect your link to your Microsoft 365. And then, again, you have to sign in using your Unimas email. Okay, click the blue button, sign in. Using your Unimas email and click next. And then use the password you have registered earlier. Okay, Sawang. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of lost. I don't get to this screen. Dia, it, it brought me back to the original uh, time zone punya uh, page. Lagi rasa je kot. It's okay. We just go ahead. All right. I will, I will, I will, yeah. So, here I already enter my ID and sign in so when you have successful sign in the process for activating your Webex account has been successful so congratulations so that is so that is the first part i want to share so the second part i want to share today is about schedule your meeting or schedule your class I hope nothing is left, okay? Now we will go to the part two, how we schedule our meeting or our class. First, to begin the process of your schedule, your, your class or your meeting, the first thing you need to, to do is to have to sign in at unimas.webex.com like the address I am sharing here, please type this web page and you have to sign in. Okay, you have to sign in, you click the blue button and you have to sign in. Okay, again, use your ID and your password, your ID or Unimas email and your password that you registered before. Okay. So, so for this section, you have to click schedule right here. This is the part where we have to set the date and the time for your meeting class to be held. But the first thing you have to give the subject or title of your class or title of your meeting, okay? Example I gave here was I, I have used the course title for my class, SAC 1013 Basics of Social Sciences. And then a meeting password, you can leave as it is or you can set your own password, okay? And here, I set my own password, WA22FSSH. So, <laughs> yes, anything? <clears throat> you can use the meeting password uh, that are already given, or you can create a new password over here. 
Okay. Then you can set your date, time, and duration. Just click over here. You can go to this page. Okay, you, you can set your date and your time. Maybe you can start on 10 a.m. And then your duration of your class is in between one hour to you to click. Okay. So for recurrence box, check the box if it recurs for you. The recurrence pattern, I think the one off meeting purposes is not necessary for recurrence button, but it's better example for repeat classes weekly or two times a week, or maybe the, uh, the weekly meeting you can set the recurrence button. Okay, maybe every one week, every Monday, and then you have to end your class after seven meetings, or maybe you have a date of your meeting to be end. You just put the date over here. Okay. I simply place it after seven meetings. Uh, for example, here, after seven meetings means after seven class. Right. So here, for others, I'm not sure, but for me, this is a bit tiring to do since you need to include every student's or participant's email that will be in your class. So just imagine when you have 100 students on your class, so you need to enter 100 students' emails over here. So what can you do? So what is the option you have? So you have to stay tuned. I will share to you later how you can share without enter the student's email over here. OK. But if you have a small group of students, you can just enter the student's email and click enter. And then your student's email can will appear like this. And your student's email or your participant's email can appear at the below. And the things or any advanced options like recording during your, your class or during your meeting, you have to do over here you have to take automatically start recording when the meeting starts and if you want to choose to provide a reminder email before you start your class or before you start your meeting you just enter maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes before the meeting starts okay so when all is done, so please save your templates for your future classes. OK, and then click to schedule your class or to schedule your meeting. So when the, this all information appears, you already successful schedule your meeting or your class and all informations about the class or all, all informations about your meeting you can be reviewed here and you can also copy all the information here copy you just click the button copy you can share your information through your WhatsApp or text message to your students. Or you can edit all the information. You can delete all the information. Or you can add the information into your calendar. Okay. So, is it okay right now? Is it clear?
Yes, clear, clear. Okay. So now we get to the... Okay. So after you're done, you can check your email because you will receive the email from the Webex. Okay. This is an email confirmation from Webex containing your information regarding your schedule, regarding your class schedule and your meeting schedule. So after receiving this email, you can forward the uh, information to your student. You can forward this meeting class or uh, your class invitation to your students. You just share the information to your students or to your uh, other participants. Okay, so now we get to the third section. How your students or others can join your meeting or your class. So the first way is by email invitation. This means you must have the student's email or participant's email that you wish to invite. They will get an invitation like this. And they can join the meeting by clicking the join meeting button. All the information you want to share to your students, you can get it from your Unimas email. All right. This is the first way. The second, use meeting number and meeting password. The second method or the second way is through a meeting number and meeting password that you can be shared with your students or your participants for which you do not have their email. This is also the method that I mentioned earlier. If you have many students you want to invite, like you have a mini student in your class, maybe more than 50 students or maybe 100 students, you can get this meeting number, access code or meeting and meeting password together from your email, from your Unimas email and share it with your student. Dr. Diba, yeah. can, we share, can we share the link that you have in your email Yep. And then uh, share the link in the WhatsApp group. Share the link in. Sorry, my my. You means my slideshow? What? No, 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 no. What I mean is, once you get the confirmation from Webex, all right, in the email of yep. you, uh, your schedule of your classes and whatnot, and then yes. after that, you want to invite your students to join your class, right? Yes. So it's possible for you to yes. copy yes. and share the yes. link in the WhatsApp. Just click this, this box. You just click ah. this box. You see this box, the white box? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you can share through your WhatsApp. Okay, okay, all right. All right. Okay, this is the... Uh, oh. Yeah, yes, uh, Awang? Anything? No, no, I'm done, I'm done. All right. Okay. This is the second way or second method through a meeting number and meeting password. They can be shared also with your students. You just share the meeting number and meeting password to your students. And uh, this method uh, is better for the number of the number of uh, maybe more than fifty, more than twenty or fifty or hundred students, and you do not have the email and do you do not have to type the email all right so ask your student to go to uh www.webex.com this is the webex web page and ask them to enter the meeting number that you already share with them your student have to enter the meeting number and then your student have to enter the meeting password and then click OK. Then ask your student to make sure they enter the correct class. They have to check the available information before click to join the meeting. OK, like this, uh, 
we have meeting information uh what we call that hosted by your lecturer name and then uh what time and then what all right so this is this is the last part how we conduct your class or meeting using uh, uh sorry this is uh how they can available to join your class or your uh, meeting this is the second way how your student can join your class okay so the last part i want to share today is about how you conduct or start your class or how you how you can conduct your meeting okay again you have to sign up your webex account enter your id and then your password you have created earlier go to the menu on the left and you click meetings you click the meetings and then you click the green button to start your meeting and before you start your meeting you have to make sure the audio and video are in the good condition and you have please unmute your audio or you, and you can on or off your video before you start your meeting and then you click the meeting the start meeting button and this is all the host button you can see all these buttons have their own functions as i as I over here share with you, this is mute and unmute button. This is video button. Either you want on or off your videos. You can try each of these buttons to learn more about your functions. OK, and you, if you want to leave your uh, meeting or you want to leave your class, you just do click the red button or you want to leave the meeting session you want to transfer the meeting session to the others you just click the red button so i think that's all for my sharing today so thank you everyone who was with me in today's session so if you have any questions dr diba can you yes. go to the preference uh no no the menu the menu the, the one on the left hand side the menu the Remember menu. the menu? You showed us the menu. Where, where that menu where you can find the preference. One of the, the one of the key functions is preference. Preference. Set up process, kah? Na set up process tadi kah? No, no, no. I just I just want you to briefly tell us what the other panels are the functions of the panels. Oh, this one. No, no, no. The, the slide that you showed just now. Atas lagi. I think it's a slide 36. 36. This one? Ah. Okay. What are the other functions like inside, support and all that? Yeah? Okay. Better I go to the... Actual web packs. Yeah, actual web page. You have to wait. Mm. I already managed to sort out my time zone. Okay, it's good. You're so brilliant. now I'm back in Malaysia, Awang. Yes. <laughs> you are brilliant, Awang. It's never too old to learn, Sandy. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Diba, so yeah. is this something quite like uh, Microsoft Team, right? Yeah. So which one is actually the better for Microsoft Teams? Sorry? I can't hear you. Which one is actually uh, better, better team, uh, for, for teaching purpose? Yeah, Webex is better. So it's actually uh, good for live, can synchronous, right? Mm, synchronous. Oh, okay. Why do you say that Webex is better, Abiba? 
kalau compare dengan compare dengan Zoom contohnya uh, kalau uh, Zoom kalau dia, dia, dia limitkan dia only dia untuk 40 minit sahaja minit. penggunaan tapi kalau ada lesson memang dia boleh bagi lebih more than 40 minutes lah tapi untuk Webex dia bagi sampai 24 hours penggunaan and up to 100 participant tapi kalau sebab Unimas dah dah bagi kita license so hmm. kita boleh participant boleh up sampai 1000 orang okey so How about compare to teams, teams? ya yeah. Com kalau apa kita compare dengan MS Teams MS Teams dia kita kena type kalau contohnya yang student ramai-ramai tadi kan kita tak boleh, kita kena, kita tak ada dua kaedah uh, sharing untuk student yang ramai contohnya. Oh, you mean untuk invite lah, untuk invite student. Yes, untuk invite student oh, contohnya okay. lah. And then dekat, uh, and then untuk uh, Webex juga, dia ada, uh, you boleh buat pool, <coughs> contohnya quiz. Itulah saya tak boleh buka pula, uh, apa tu? Uh, dia punya website. Uh, website. Kalau tak saya boleh tunjuk macam mana kita boleh buat kuis secara online direct dengan student through Webex ini. Hmm, that is interesting. Uh, ah, yeah. that one is interesting. Important tu. Ah, uh ah, -uh, memang dia maybe, boleh guna. Yeah. Riba, maybe in next session, insyaallah. Ah, uh, insyaallah. Insyaallah. <laughs> insyaallah. Insya ni, yes. Yeah. Ya ada, kita boleh buat direct quiz dengan student and then boleh dapatkan terus dia punya jawapan uh, daripada student and terus dapat result on the spot, ya boleh through Webex, boleh dibuat. Dr. Adiba, ada soalan yeah. daripada Dr. Dolly ni. Yeah. Kalau student download free ke apps uh, Webex, Webex ni? Uh, dia dia orang just uh, Download saja application Webex dalam dia orang punya komputer free tak ada masalah tak perlu bayar tapi dia orang kena masuk guna invitation kita ataupun masuk guna address ID dan uh, password yang kita bagilah guna dua cara yang saya share tadi. Adakah menjawab? Ah, uh, di bawah. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Uh, untuk kelainan mungkin next next uh, session kita cuba zoom pula. <laughs> boleh ya? Uh? After all, boleh. it's just a short short meeting kan, less than 45 minutes. Boleh. Than, siapa yang ada? People, yeah. Siapa yang ada apa lesson zoom tu mungkin boleh boleh jadi host sebab dia akan guna more than 40 minutes lah, boleh guna lebih daripada 40 minutes penggunaan. Dr. Diba, uh, is it possible for you to share? Are you able to share the actual demonstration of how Webex is used? Especially yang screen sharing tu. Takut dia berbeza dengan dengan uh, platform lain. Boleh nampak tak saya buka Webex sekarang? <coughs> nampak, nampak. Nampak tak? Nampak. Nampak tak? Nampak, nampak. Nampak, nampak, nampak. Eh? Okay. Ini adalah menu utama dia kalau kita pergi home, kita punya home page di, di sini. Di sini you akan schedule your uh, macam yang saya share tadi lah. You can uh, schedule your meeting and you can start your meeting. And then here. Okay, yang ini tadi, yang saya dah share tadi. Okay. If you already schedule your meeting, so it will be appear over here. Alright. So this is your recordings. Kalau you ada buat record, dia akan appear di sini lah. Here. Okay. What is your record, apa semua, dia akan masuk di bawah inilah. Uh, di bawah name ini. Dr. Adiba, so if that is the case, uh, student yang miss our lecture, for example, live punya lecture, can still go and uh, follow the lecture recorded version kan? Ya, yeah, dia dia orang boleh follow the recorded version. Okay. That's why you have to record your 
Your lecture lah kan tadi saya ada dah tunjuk uh, the, the advanced option tadi kan? Uh. Uh, advanced option tadi you have to uh, letak option awal-awal untuk record your lecture. So tak lupa lah. Eh, uh, dia recording tu dalam yeah. dalam dalam sistem tu kan? Ya. Yeah. Recording tu dia yang dibuat dia dalam sistem lah. Tak payah kita ah, dalam sistem. Apa -apa. Yang saya dah tunjuk tadi, I already ah. tunjuk tadi. Jadi kita kalau kita buka, kita just buka balik lah recording tu. Ah, buka balik dia akan appear di sini. Sekejap. Okay. Ya. Sama dengan student lah, sama boleh buka. Kan hmm. appear di sini, di sini. Okay. Okay. So kita pun boleh access bila bila masalah. Ha. Yes, yes. Hmm. Anytime. Pasal dah ada dekat di situ, maksud dia dah, dah record lah. Hmm. So, any question? Apa nama link tadi? Ya? Link yang student kalau dia <laughs> nak masuk tadi. Lepas kita klik the white box tu. Ada satu link tu. Boleh ditunjuk balik tu? HTTPS apa ada mana? The sec... Uh, how student to join your class? Ah kan? yes, yes. After apa nama? Uh, Just click number and click password. This one kah? Stanley? Bukan dia punya link tadi. Link number. Uh, link. Oh link, okay. Ah, sepas you click the white box lah. The white box kan? Aha. Uh -huh. Ah. Lupa slide number tadi. Uh, to record the next slide number. I think it's a third section. This one kan? Third section ada ah, mana? Ada ah, mana? This one. No, no, the third. Yang, yang ada yang, attend a meeting. Yang ada third section. Ah, bawah sikit. Third session, how your ah. student can join your meeting or your class? Ah, ya, ya, bawah. Tengok lagi slide. Like. Kan ada website tadi di bawah. Ah, ada oh. tadi. Ah, lagi, lagi. Okay. Lagi. This one. Ah, time. this one. This one. This one. This one. Ah. Oh. Are you going to share with me through email? This one. Yeah, sure, sure. Ah, better to record it down. Lah. Apa nama tadi? Where is that? Ah, yeah, this. Sure. Ah, this one. Ah. Ah. You can just give your student ah uh, link ini lah. Uh, apa? Ah. Ah, uh, untuk dia orang masuk. So, dia orang terus join a meeting over here. Just enter the meeting number. You already give the meeting number to the student. Just enter the meeting number and then just enter their meeting password. So, okay. they can join your class. Simple saja. Just share ini, uh, apa? This uh, website link to lah. the student. Oh, okay. uh, link ini to the student. Okay. So, tak ada soalan dah? Uh, Diba, oh. ada soalan dari Dr. Dolly. Ya. Maybe Dr. Dolly nak tanya dia pun lah. So, Ariba. Ya, yeah, saya. Yang soalan saya tu pasal email address student kan kita hantar kepada email student. Ya. Yeah. Adakah yeah. email ni mas kah? Ataupun mana-mana email ataupun Gmail saja kah? Mana-mana email boleh tapi better email ni mas lah. Itu kehadiran kan? Ah. Boleh masuk mana-mana email Tapi better they use Unimas punya email lah Siswa Betul yeah. Diba? Yes uh, yeah, This new thing kita sebenarnya kalau kita nak buat percubaan dulu kan uh -huh. uh, Sebelum kita betul-betul uh, menjalankannya melaku, uh, dengan student kan yeah. Ini masalahnya macam mana kita nak buat trial dengan siapa <laughs> oh. Supaya dia berjalan uh, sebelum kita uh, Trial sama-sama kawan-kawan dululah <laughs> Kawan boleh kah? Uh. Dengan keluarga boleh? Ini mas boleh allow that? Dengan ahli keluarga Kalau dengan ahli keluarga, does Unimas uh, Webex system allow us to do that? If you have an email of your wife, guy, try with your wife dulu lah. <laughs> ah, boleh, boleh. Ah, di mana? Nak cuba lah. Ah, kan? ah. 
supaya kita kita apa nama <laughs> kelang kabut nanti. Uh-huh. So, Guys, I also I also dah share the YouTube YouTube on Webex dalam kita punya uh, group. Okay. Hari tu saya buat uh, Zoom meeting saya cuba dengan dengan anak saya dulu dengan isteri saya dulu. Uh, ini boleh tak ini? Sistem Webex ni. Sebab your concern that is kita register dengan Unimas eh? Ah itulah, ya lah. Besok kita register dengan Unimas ya. Yeah. Uh, but then again, if you look uh, on the other side kan, kalau you uh, you are invited, macam student tadi, if you invite the student, then the student tu boleh download apps tu kan, boleh pakai kan? Mm. Yes. Pakai email dia orang kan? Okey lah, okey, okay. ya. Yeah. Memang kita okay. invite student, tak perlu uh, guna email dia orang pun boleh. Uh, Dr. Diba. Yep. Let's say kita buat online quiz kan, guna Webex. Uh-huh. Kita buat quiz. Yeah, there could be an issue also orang lain tolong jawab kan, boleh tak? Memang jadi isu pun untuk mana-mana application pun sama. Ya, take home and jam lagi bagus awal. Take home and jam, 24 hours. Untuk Ili pun boleh orang lain tolong jawab kan? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, kalau tak ada lagi Kak Lin, uh, Puan Siti Hajah, Siti Hasina, anything? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Thank you so Alhamdulillah. much. Thank you semua kerana uh, sama-sama kita dapat ilmu baru. Okay, thank you so much everyone. Ah, sama buka puasa. Yeah, see you again. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Bye bye. Tunjuklah muka masing-masing. <laughs> Saya kan tu nak tengok muka masing-masing ha. Layang Asma ada, Dr. Spencer, ada Dr. Nelson. Awang. Nice to see you again. Take care, stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. Insya-Allah. Bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.